so we talked about the idea of doing a Mexican lager for some time. It's not a style that either of us are really just enamored with necessarily. So it's less of a, I guess, you know, traditional Mexican lager and it's more just gotten, gotten weird at this point. Um, I fell in love with Dogfish Head Sequench. It's brewed with, um, I guess it's kind of like their Ghost of Berliner Weiss, um, brewed with limes. And then last summer, Bearded Iris had Forecast, and it had this incredible drinkability, lime flavor. I wanted to try to do something that was kind of like a, an ode to both of those. This was designed to be our simplest brew day yet, uh, but as usual, there's a little bit of disaster waiting around the corner. Mash wise, it was real easy. Just 11 pounds of Pilsner malt. So this is, was our actually our fourth brew with our pandemic uh, supply of Pilsner malt. We did use a little bit of corn sugar, but we didn't want to go buy any more ingredients. We didn't want to go get corn, like flaked corn or flaked maize. Yeah. So we just used some corn sugar to dry it out a little bit. Easy balanced uh, water profile, nothing special there. Nothing special on the hops. We did, uh, we had one ounce, one ounce of crystal first wort hops, 90 minutes. to be clever with our planning. We did our mash. We decided that we were going to go pitch this on the yeast cake of our Pilsner we did earlier because we wanted to conserve yeast and not go out to the store anymore. So we pitched it on that yeast cake. So that meant we had to bottle the beer that was in the fermenter uh, before we pitched this one. This 
90 minute boil. We sanitized the bottles, got all that ready, got everything sanitized. And we came back to the boil. Black limes in general, I mean, I didn't know what they were really. Like I thought that you could just go to the store and get them, but I ended up having to do some research and go into the Middle Eastern market in town. Yeah, then we had to crush them up. And then we had like a big shell. Really yeah. And I, I ended up- uh, Cut yourself on one? Yeah, so I went home and I crushed one up and made a little tea with it. And the shell was really sharp and I, you can see I have a Band-Aid in some of the videos. Fantastic lime aroma. It's got this kind of like cool spicy aroma too. Then as it was cooling, we went and bottled the Pilsner. Yeah. While we were bottling and filming the thing, uh, Olivia, Seth, and Owen are running around with sidewalk chalk, just uh, having a grand old time. Seth keeps picking up the chalk and drawing on our um, our our kettles that we're cleaning. Oh yeah. <laughs> We call it a, a Mexican lager, but then we've got some uh, Middle Eastern black lime. The Berliner Weiss kind of goes to sort of thing. Yeah. It's a little more European. <laughs> oh, and we filmed it like an Italian spaghetti western, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's truly an international beer. It, yeah, it really is. When it was done cooling, pitched it. We, we pitched it on the yeast cake into the fermenter, put that up. What are we drinking today, Chad? Well, it's this ultimate cool guy beer called Who Is Hermano? Of course, it's named after a joke from Arrested Development <laughs> Season 1. Yeah. Hermano. And uh, in case you can't tell, it is sweltering hot. <laughs> yes, this is uh, perfect for this beer, though. This is... Uh, the ultimate summer beer. Just a word of advice. Uh, when it's a hot brew day, don't wear all black, a stupid hat, and uh, stay hydrated. Spend a lot of time drinking tons of water. I, I poured it in this ridiculous glass that really accentuates the carbonation. <laughs> So we're looking at a just beautiful pale straw color, pale yellow, 
pretty clear. To me, this is maybe the most refreshing beer we've ever done. I think it is. I can't think of anything else that would oh, rival it. It's perfect we've, for it. Uh, we've got some. <laughs> it's still there. I'm just gonna have foam on my mustache, okay? Stop judging me. Um, yeah, it's super crisp, zesty. Yeah. Just refreshing. This is like top notch. So aroma wise, it's kind of got that a little bit of that lager yeast characteristic, um, as in like this kind of like that hint of barest hint of sulfur, then uh, a lot of that malt, the Pilsner malt aroma. Yeah. Um, and a little bit like a hint of the lime and the hop, the El Dorado hop. There's like this kind of limey fruitiness coming through there. We 100% did El Dorado hops because the name of it, by the way. Plus, I mean, I do love that hop. But yeah. Zesty. Yeah. Lime. Definitely like that lime zest. So oftentimes people talk about Pilsner malt having a cracker crumb flavor to it, uh, a little bit of breadiness. But what's interesting is the that flavor mixed with the sea salt kind of makes it more of a tortilla chip flavor rather than <laughs> cracker crumb or bread. Uh, yeah, I can 100% um, vouch for this pairing very, very, very well with Mexican food too. Kind of a taste like, like a Hellas would be the base beer, kind of like a German Hellas, and then you go drop in the, in a subtle way. It's not, it's not overbearing. Yeah. I feel like this one was kind of spreading the wings somewhat, you know? We haven't really done a beer like this before. We just started doing lagers this past year. Yeah. Because uh, we finally moved our stuff into a fermentation chamber so we could do true lagers. But we used to put a lot of stuff in our beer. Oh, yeah. And um, I think that the distance from those days made us think that we would need a hot bag. And we totally did. Yeah, but... the, the black lime is very fine particulate. And then... Uh, we didn't strain the lime juice when we squeezed them. So, uh, and then we, we also didn't, we forgot the cold crash of the spear. Both of us forgot. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> there, there is a little bit of stuff in here. You gotta make sure that you pour the bottles carefully. Either way, we, we've gone through the phases yeah. where we brewed weird stuff. And then we've gone through counter phase where we pretty much just brewed like IPAs. True to style. Yeah. yeah. It was feeling kind of like returning to form, being a little bit more creative, adding weird stuff, just screw it. <laughs> yeah, I've had this idea of fermenting, so to speak, <laughs> for some time. Right when we're doing this beer, Stone drops one. It's a salt and lime lager. Freaking New Belgium has a, a sparkling lime lager now. I start seeing these things popping up everywhere. So there's never an original thought ever. No. So we also brewed this on, not Cinco de Mayo, but Do Doso de Mayo. De Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> so it was almost an important, important day in Mexican history. Uh oh. That's you. What What did you do to get wanted? What crime did you commit? Did you steal Nintendo games? No. Did you poop in people's beer? <laughs> no, all we did on earth, that wasn't me. Who was it? So, what do you, what do you think that Buddha here did? Hey, what was his crime? I don't know. I do. What? Waking he people up. He tortured his parents. <laughs> yeah. For 16 straight months. I believe he's a villain because he keeps me up. All night. Every night. I don't ever sleep anymore. What about Pepper the zombie? Is, 
Is he your enemy or is he your accomplice? He, he's alive in my planet and he's evil. <gasps> he's... I'm pretty sure Owen used to uh, run from him in Target. Yeah. And now he's your best friend. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe, but Sefi's a good boy. And then we're back. Everyone. No, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs>